Hello YouTube, D. Badra here. So this is going to be a three-part teardown for a Nucular 24 FET. A lot of this is in common with say like the 12 FET or the 6 FET controller that Nucular makes. But anyway, uh, specifically what was asked for is that I do a teardown of a Nucular 24 FET and I've got one that I'm not using right now. So here it is and we're going to take a peek at it and hopefully that's going to uh, satiate some curiosity, give people some information that they were looking for about what's it like inside a nucular. So anyway, the first video is going to be fit and finish, shell stuff, things like that. The second video is going to be doing this kind of a high level view of the actual controller and of the LCD. And then the third video, I will put my macro lens on and we'll get right down close so we can try to get as best of a view in here as possible because, you know, this is kind of crowded. Um, and, you know, highly integrated. And that's not a bad thing. It's just, you know, kind of hard to see in there without getting in real close. So, anyway, I'm going to set this aside. Um, actually, you know what? Before I do that, I'm not going to set it aside. Because this is all fit and finish kind of stuff. And this has got stuff in here to talk about. Uh, so, anyway, um, yeah, the, the, the wires on here, uh, the three phase wires are all 7 aug. Everything ends in these nice and beefy solid copper ring terminals. I mean, these things are thick. <laughs> these aren't your cheapy Chinese versions. Somebody was was careful to make sure that they used nice heavy duty ring terminals. So yeah, this, this is excellent. Uh, you know, and of course they put heat shrink on all the joints. So yeah, they use beefy copper ring terminals and nice big 7 aug wires. Th th this could have easily been cheaped out and they didn't. Um, here's your two battery wires. And again, they're, these are 8 aug, not 7 aug, but exact same ring terminals on there. Everything here is just very nice and bulky and beefy. Um, here is your, uh, what is this, motor and hall, or yeah, hall and um, temp sensor rather. Uh, so, you know, it's a waterproof IP68 connector. Uh, I don't particularly like these kind because there's no support for the wires. But again, you know, the good attention detail, you know, I can't complain about, you know, waterproof connectors. Um, but uh, yeah, that's that's just fine. Uh, this is your main I/O cable, and in here is throttle, brake, uh, you, you know, uh, enable uh, or not enable in here, but uh, you know, cruise, three speeds, all that stuff is right here. Uh, again, I don't really like these connectors that much. They're not waterproof, and uh, so I would put all this stuff like in an IP68 connector. In fact, that's how I do all this. Uh, and then that puts everything inside a screw together connector. You just lock it together and it's got silicone O-rings inside it, so it's waterproof. And, well, this isn't. This isn't my favorite. Um, there's this other cable right here. So it's got a uh, pH 2.0 connector on there because the spacing is 2 millimeters, hence the 2.0. And this goes up to the LCD. Uh, again, uh, this isn't waterproof, but this isn't really much of a concern because this will be inside the LCD shell. So that's okay. Uh, it's oftentimes a little short. Uh, just depends on your EV specifically. And uh, swapping out this cable for a longer one is not that hard. And uh, Nucular will sell you a longer cable. Uh, whatever length you want, uh, and they'll make it up for you, or you can do your own. I believe I made this one myself or was going to or something like that. I, I know I've replaced these cables a couple times and usually I just make them myself. They're not that hard. All you need is the pins and the crimper and the connectors and ta-da, you're done. So not really that difficult. All right, so the rest of this stuff in here, I'll talk about that when I get to there. When it, this is all fit and finish stuff. So I covered those details. So here is the shell. Uh, it's extruded aluminum and uh, you can see these pretty decent fins on the side and there's six holes in here because there are six screws that secure the heat spreader inside to the wall of the shell and then the same thing for the other side so lots of screws lots of surface area I can't complain about that at all that's that's a very good thing and um, I'll get to the screws in a minute but yeah uh, good attention to detail I uh, can't really complain about the shell but the only time that I say I ha I'd have anything here about the shell that is of some kind of a concern to me. It's, you know, if you're running the controller close to its upper limits, this shell is not really adequate. You need more cooling than this. So, like in one instance um, uh, where I employed a Nucular 24 FET, uh, I milled these fins off the sides 
and then I added an external block of aluminum using those six screw holes uh, and then I was able to take the whole controller through two thick blocks of aluminum on either side and screw it down to a larger heatsink and then that got the controller cool enough so that it wasn't overheating but otherwise without doing that the controller was getting too hot uh, just because you know there wasn't enough radiating area here and the controller was also in an area where it didn't get very good airflow over it so you know it was a kind of a combination thing part of it was not really adequate enough radiating surfaces here for that situation and part of it was there just wasn't airflow either so uh, not really Necular's fault per se, but anyway, the, the controller case is very nicely built. Uh, you know, all, all the screws match. Uh, you know, you won't find holes that are crooked. You know, they all have silicone seals on them, that kind of thing. So let me talk about those screws for a second here. Uh, and then I'll get to the LCD and what I think about that. So here's all the screws. And you basically have three kinds here. Uh, so you have ones like this and there's 12 of these and they have a flat washer, a lock washer and they are all stainless steel M3 screws and they're all exactly the same um, what is that, a number, yeah, number one I think it is, a Phillips head, so all the screws have number one Phillips head uh, anyway, they're all the same and there's 12 of them and so yeah, it's good attention to detail and they didn't skimp on the screws in that regard um, there are five of this size screw that hold the side cover so like this these are all the same screws on either side so and again they all match in fact all the screw heads everywhere all match uh, so yeah good tension to detail there and then in there's another one of those there we go and then the LCD case itself is held together by two different size screws so these shorter ones uh, what is that like um, I don't know, <laughs> 10 millimeters long or whatever, five mil six millimeters long, something like that, and these longer ones, which are probably 15 millimeters long. But again, all the screw heads match, as you can see. And yeah, good attention to detail, can't complain about any of that. And of course, everything's all stainless steel machine screws, so they're not gonna rust, uh, they're not gonna bind up in anything, they're not gonna gall the aluminum. So yeah, that's, that's a good detail. I, I am very appreciative of that. Uh, this, is the LCD case and oh, where's the other piece of it there it is so yeah this is gonna be right there so this would be the LCD case uh, this is an this is not their current LCDs this is uh, a second revision uh, LCD and and shell and the latest ones are a little bit different but this is still a pretty reasonable representation of their current LCDs I don't have a a current one that I can take apart and show you, so we'll have to use this older one I've got. Anyway, uh, again, you know, good fit and finish. Uh, you know, the plastic parts all fit together very nicely. It's all, you know, extruded ABS plastic, which is fine for this application. Uh, the, the back cover, uh, there are five screws around here, and then you can see little holes right here, and those kind of like clamp whatever wires you put inside, uh, you know, to, into the connectors. Uh, anyway, that's that's all fine. Uh, if there's anything that uh, I don't like about this LCD, it's two things. One of them is this uh, little uh, swivel mount right here. Uh, you can't really get it tight enough. <laughs> It'll always move on you. So like uh, the one EV where I've got one of these LCDs, uh, I ended up, what did I do? I put washers inside here, I think it was. That way uh, it had something to clamp against. Because uh, otherwise this plastic will flex and you'll never really get it tight enough. So I had to add some washers inside there. So I had something to clamp against. Otherwise you can't get this tight enough to make it not move. And so your LCD, like you might just have it set like this, but over time it'll like migrate like this. And then before long you're looking at it wrong or or a vibration will cause it to flop back or whatever. So that's, that's like my one really biggest complaint. The other one is is... On the side here, there's this little slot for a micro SD card, like the micro SD card, because you can use it to load firmware, you can use it to keep logs of controller functionality, uh, you can use it to um, store like your setups, like you want to back up, put all on the SD card, so that's super handy. However, this little rubber door that goes over that slot, well, this is a pain in the ass, uh, just call it that. So there's a little tiny hole in the corner over here, and there's this little 
flangey thing or you know a little wiggly worm thing on the back of the door and it's got this little blob of, of rubbery, rubbery stuff like on it. Well when you pull the door out to get at the SD card slot for whatever reason uh, you eventually pull and it stops on this little rubber blob. That's fine because that way you don't lose the door but then getting this to go back inside again because it's on this little floppy or little rubbery thing is flippery and well <laughs> finicky and all that. Then <laughs> when you get really close and you've got a micro SD card in the slot you have to get that into this little slot right here and that's finicky and fiddly as well and while you're getting the SD card to sit inside there then you have to get this little lip around the rubber thing to fit inside this little slot around there and if you get all those things together then finally your little rubber door will stay in place but in between time uh, half the time you will miss that slot and you'll eject your micro SD card then you gotta put it back in again and then you gotta start over again about getting the door situated so it's it's finicky, uh, it's fiddly, it's it's annoying <laughs> I'll just call it that. Don't like this little detail wish there was some other way to do the door. Uh, however uh, on a positive note you'll see brass inserts everywhere um, you know rather than you know threading into the plastic instead they put brass inserts that's a good thing you know, look, there, there they are, three brass inserts in the plastic back cover. And then inside the lid, four brass inserts, because everything threads into brass rather than into plastic. Uh, and they could have easily skimped on this, and they didn't. This shows attention to detail, caring about, you know, what they were making, things like that. I, I can't complain about that. That's very good. Um, this is an early revision LCD, so I don't know why this shows up on camera. But this little piece inside here, this is 3D printed, uh, and you know, in later revisions, that's no longer the case. This is actually, uh, you know, this is like the little button carrier. Uh, that piece is actually extruded clear plastic, and you know, from the outside, you can't tell. You know, you get these uh, uh, these silicone buttons that you press, and they have a nice tactile tactile feel. They make a nice clicky sound, and you can feel it when you press the buttons. Uh, so th this is all, you know, nice and tactile and things like that can't really complain about that but this this is early revision stuff so uh, it's not really representative of what Nucular is doing right now. Um, I believe that's about everything I want to show in this first video just fit and finish kind of things uh, things I like and don't like about the Nuculars uh, you know from that perspective in my next video we're gonna talk about the general overall controller and LCD and again in the third video we're gonna do a macro video of all that stuff so Anyway, stay tuned for more.